A while ago, we had a look at the Noctua NHL9i X65, a completely exaggerated and upscaled version of the cute little L9i. And today, we are going to do kind of the same thing with another one of the coolers. Today, it's all about the Noctua NHC14S, the monster truck version of the cute little L12S. So this is the Noctua NHC14S. Inside the usual Noctua style box you will also find the usual Noctua goodies. Mounting hardware for pretty much every socket that you could possibly want to install it on, a screwdriver, a tube of thermal paste and a low noise adapter in case you want to cripple the max fan speed of your fan cause you know, psychopath. The heatsink is a hell of a gorgeous one. In the bottom you will find the tried and tested big copper nickel plated base and from there we have those beautiful looking seven copper heat pipes that are traveling pretty much high up there and until they do a complete u-turn and go into that massive heatsink it's 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 truly a beautiful heatsink. The fan that comes included the C14S is one of Noctua's NFA14 PVM. As the name suggests, this is a PVM powered fan. Wow. The 140mm diagonal fan is capable of spinning at up to 1500 rpm while it's pushing 82 CFM at 2.08mm of H2O. Before we cover where and how the fan can be installed, let's quickly go over the installation map. For an Intel CPU, we need to take the provided Intel backplate and shove the Intel screws through the holes and fix them on the other side using the plastic washers. And make sure to click the screws into the outer hole for LGA 1700 and the inner ones for everything else. From here, position the backplane behind the motherboard, take the spacers, blue for LGA 1700 and black for everything else, and position them onto the outsticking piece of screw. From here, we need to position the mounting brackets in an outward pointing position with the screw end pointing upwards, and then just make sure that both sides are symmetrically positioned, and then screw everything down using the nuts. Over on the MD side, it's a bit less what needs to be done. Remove the pre-installed retention brackets, put some spacers on top, gray for AM4 and white for everything else, and place the AMD mounting brackets in an inward pointing position on top of that, and then just screw it down. From here on both platforms, remove the fan of the cooler, splash some thermal paste onto your CPU, and then slap the enormous heatsink on top of that and screw it down through the holes in the heatsink. Now at this point, we can install the fan and doing this will have a huge impact on hardware compatibility. By default, Noctua usually portrays the cooler as having the fan mounted on top of it. And this is the so-called high clearance mode. In this so-called high clearance mode, the cooler is 142 mm high. But as the cooler is protruding over the first few RAM slots, we do have some sort of a restriction. In this case, we are looking at up to 67 mm high RAM. Mind you, that close to no RAM that I was able to find are 67, so you are good to go, that's not really a restriction. However, there is also something called low profile mode. This is meant for people that really want to use this monster of a cooler, but can't afford the height. In this case, we can take the A14 and install it underneath the heatsink. This lowers the overall height of the cooler down to just 115 mm, but simultaneously it lowers the maximum RAM height down to 40 mm. Of course, this is not a total deal breaker. Things like cause a vengeance and, and that kind of, you know, without a big ass heatsink on top will fit perfectly fine. But if you get into the whole RGB space, like Trident Z's, those are 44 millimeters, so that's a bit too much. And then there's also a dual fan mode, which is basically designed for the madman out there, but that's for another video. And before anybody thinks that you can outplay God, yes, Noctia's mountings are rotatable to all four directions, but this won't save you. This will just mean that the overhang will be on the VRM heatsink side. And, and this will either just not work, or you have really good VRM heatsinks on there. And oh yeah, and the pipes will also probably hit your RAM, so just no you can't install it in all four directions. Now with all of these modes out of the way, let's go to the actually important part of this review. Benchmarks. Upon summoning the devil on the 3900X, the C14S managed to cool it down to 57 degrees C above ambient. That's solid 6 degrees C better than the smaller L12S. A very good result considering how much 
performance Noctua just managed to squeeze out out of a C-shaped cooler. Such a good result that, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, there is absolutely no cooler above the C14S at a lower build height. The closest thing that I was able to find is a Dark Rock TF2, which yeah, th this thing is just weird on a whole other level. So then, this means that the C14S takes the spot as the best performing low profile cooler at 150mm height on our regular benchmark. Over on the noise to performance graph, the C14 managed to compete again. Here we were able to see that it clearly distances itself from the NHL12S and managed to be somewhere in between the original low profile C shaped model and the much, much bigger D12L. As a little gag, I also left the Arctic A13X in there because it's 22mm higher actually. So no, height is not everything, girth is where the heatsinks are at. So an excellent result, considering how low profile this truly is. Having that said, where does this leave us? Ignoring the design, as this is, you know, the usual thing that you have to decide for yourself, the C14 is clearly a highly optimized cooler. However, it is still highly optimized for a specific purpose. In the end, it is today low profile cooler, or at least it is aimed to be used as one. No matter if you want to go with that 142 mm height with the fan on top of the 115 with the fan underneath like I have it here, this cooler is not made for the standard box-like PC case. The potential RAM restriction is the best example for that. So in my opinion, this should not be treated like an average bimbo CPU cooler. It is your average bimbo low profile cooler. And that's really fine, because in that size category, the C14 is a master. So if you're doing some sort of weird build, semi, SFF, or just small with an impressive amount of cooling height, and you can spare the 150mm height, the C14 is definitely one of your best options out there. However, if you can go with up to 140mm, which is the height of a C14S with the fan installed on top, I would like to introduce you to the Be Quiet Dark Rock TF2, a even weirder cooler with two fans and a C-shaped kind of curve with two heatsink and, 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 and yeah, it's, it's weird, but it's better. But okay, this should be it for the C-shaped C14S. At this point, a huge thank you for Noctua for sending it over. And if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Be Quiet Dark Rock TF2. It's just as weird, but those types of coolers are very, very specific use casey. On a side note, we also have channel membership. So if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to start. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to keep my weirdly shaped cooler addiction in, in going on because I, I have a problem now. I, I, I can't stop. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.